So Lucas World, a movie about a boy born with HIE that went on to develop cerebral palsy. His mom, Barbara, and family went to find um, interventions that could improve his quality of life, going to the ends of the earth. Let's talk about the science and technology behind this and what we know that could be effective or promising um, and where things stand today. So Neurocytonics is the current name of the uh, company that, bioscience company, that has the Cytotron information um, and a clinic in Mexico and has ran a clinical trial for uh, kids with cerebral palsy using this technology. The technology is a laser that um, is supposed to go in and uh, clean out the damaged tissue in a brain and regenerate and grow new uh, brain cells. So this does appear on clinicaltrials.gov, sponsored by Cytotron, or Neurocytotron, um, and it does have some basic information. Just to qualify that clinicaltrials.gov is a database. It is not full of studies that are working through the FDA necessarily. And so this one in particular is not. Um, this one started in uh, March of 2019 and was completed officially in uh, June of 2021. They enrolled 52 kids, uh, half with the placebo, half with the uh, intervention. Um, it is an interventional study um, and this is not a phase study and so we're going to talk about why that matters and what we know. Because this is a lot of information, uh, we created a website called hopeforhia.org slash clinical trials, the clinical trial and research hub. Um, and we have a ton of information that has been uh, vetted, assembled, and reviewed and approved by our medical advisory board, which includes a lot of the leading scientists uh, who run clinical trials for HIE and associated diagnoses. Uh, so we want to make sure that you know that there's all sorts of information about the phases, trial design, uh, FAQs, all of that. And why is phasing important? Because of safety. So regulatory agencies are there to make sure that things are safe um, and that people understand risk benefit and potential risks of an intervention, medication, et cetera. So the process of research as you're looking, especially in this population, at preclinical data, so in an animal model that something is uh, predictive of being successful or looking at another indication from something that we know is approved, widely used for a population and seeing if they can translate over for a repurposed medication or intervention. Um, and the phasing is the same. <laughs> um, so if there's phase one data showing uh, that it is safe in healthy adults, that's what phase one is, then it can go to a phase two study. Phase two is where the rubber meets the road for any sort of medication, um, therapeutic, therapeutic intervention like the one we're talking about today. That is when you are going into the population that you are studying, um, either a sick population or with a specific diagnosis, and you're looking for safety signals only. So phase two is looking for safety. It is a smaller cohort typically. Um, and then that once that data comes back, uh, typically through these studies, halfway through the cohort enrolled, um, they're going to stop and do a safety pause. So they're going to analyze any sort of safety uh, indicators that there might be an adverse event happening with the intervention or medication, um, making sure that it's safe to continue for that study, especially when you're talking about things in babies and kids. Um, and then they're going to analyze and see if the, the safety data is good and if the initial data is going and looking in a positive direction that there could be um, effectiveness to this intervention or medication. And that's what phase three trials are all about. Phase two, there could be something that looks like it might be promising in a one center study, um, that when you take it to a multi-center study with hundreds of participants and still maintaining that placebo control and the therapeutic intervention, and you have a bigger pool to, to learn from, that's when you are going to get more of that information about how effective something is. Phase four trials are if something shows that good effectiveness, they want to get even a bigger population that goes to open label. There is no placebo group. Everyone gets the intervention and they get more data and outcome data longer term uh, for this intervention or medication. So as we go back to this, you'll see again, phasing. There's no phasing to this. This isn't a phase two, three, four. It, there is no phasing. Uh, this is going through the uh, Mexican regulatory agency, which is not as robust as what is considered gold standard out there, like the FDA or EMA, which is the European Medical Agency, that requires multiple steps, review points, uh, interim data analyses for focusing again on safety and efficacy. 
So what do we know about the results of this trial? Well, nothing is posted on clinicaltrials.gov. We know that this trial completed in 2021, which is almost four years ago, and there is still no published data in re about this research. It is not published in any medical journal that we could find on PubMed, and again, PubMed is not NIH-funded research. It is a database like uh, clinicaltrials.gov. So when looking for the latest updated information about this study, there is a press release that is shared from the company in January 2023. And again, it just is announcing that the trial is complete. They're doing the data analysis on this. Um, and there is some signaling in the message of the press release that there is a concern that it is not effective and that there is a call to action for bigger multi-center studies. Um, as of today, February 2025, two years after this released, there still is no data published about the initial study, and there is nothing from the company about expanding to that bigger cohort to see if it is indeed effective. Will it be effective? Will it be shown to be effective? We don't know yet. The data is not there. What we do know is that you can go and you can get information and you can sign up your child to be a part of uh, this treatment and not a part of a trial anymore, obviously. Uh, there are families that go to Mexico. They either have the capital and cash on hand or they raise it. There are public GoFundMe's when people ask, how much does this cost? Uh, the average is between $35,000 and $55,000 from public available GoFundMe's um, about this intervention. Uh, this company is looking to do another study um, for autism as an indication. But again, none of this has been approved by the Mexican Regulatory Agency as an approved therapy for um, cerebral palsy. Palsy. It is not going through the bigger agencies um, to, it, there is no information as of today about that. So we hope that there will be. Um, we're always looking for promising treatments and therapies and interventions, obviously for our kids to improve their quality of life. Uh, so this is what we know about the data, about the, the status of where this therapy is. And so, you know, everyone has their own choice to make on whether they want to pursue this or not. It's a lot of money um, for something that has not gone through a rigorous scientific scientific process um, with indications that the trial that they did run, again, no published data, no analyses, no published, uh, you know, studies in medical journals at all about this. Uh, so make up your mind on what you feel is best for your family, but we want to make sure that you have the accurate, timely information to do so.